first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio we get on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Peace back with Dr. Lemo B. Presenting to you tonight, prison and the nigga in the street. All right, we're getting ready to go into some deep information. So you listening to First World Order Radio, and we're getting ready to bring on my co-host, Brother L, for you here. Peace and love, God. Peace. How you doing tonight, brother? Well, doing very well, God. How the God doing? I'm doing well, doing well. We're going to get into Wonderful. the prison tonight. Yeah. All right, so um, let's get into some information right quick before we bring on our guests. Um. We understand that the 13th Amendment allegedly abolished slavery. And for those who don't know what slavery is, um, that's when someone controls your whole aspect of your existence. That's when they control your existence. And basically, um, when you get to the 13th Amendment, you see that they created a new problem. The newly freed slaves were not citizens of any state or country because they were just property, and property did not have citizenship. So to solve the problem, the 14th Amendment allegedly was passed, which we know it wasn't. Um, This amendment created a new class of citizenship, and this new class was legally named United States citizen, which is with a small c. All right. Notice that the United States citizen is spelled once again. That citizen part is spelled with um, lower caps, lower case C. Um, when you look at it, that is a lower class of citizenship, essentially. All right. So this class of citizenship or citizen is basically privilege, is underprivileges granted by the federal government, and is not a sovereign um, inalienable, a sovereign with inalienable rights or uneligible rights, as they refer to it as. Now, if you get um, Black's Law Dictionary 6th edition, it says that the 14th Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, ratified in 1868, 
creates or at least recognizes for the first time a citizen of the United States as distinct from that of the sovereign states. All right, so it's just what took place is that the federal government is now controlling. When you look at the prison system, they have privatized them. Now, when you look at a sovereign, technically, a sovereign has unalienable rights, not constitutional rights. All right, we all call them constitutional rights, but they're not. They are unalienable rights secured by the Constitution, the state, and the federal. So the basis of any unalienable rights is actually established essentially from the Declaration of Independence, which says, behold, these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by the creator with certain unalienable rights. And I'm saying unalienable, not uneligible, but unalienable, because that's actually what is being said that can be leaned upon. And this is what they have also switched from which they're now the government not just the corporation is de facto. So you can look at the mention of God or unalienable rights in the Constitution, and you will not find them. However, there are four constitutions. You have the Constitution, or what is known as the Articles of Association, the Articles of Confederation, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution for the United States of America, in which they became known as the Constitution of the United States of America which that is now just called the U.S. Constitution, all right? Now, when you get into unedible rights, you can see at an international level that it's persuading to the Charter of the United Nations, uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You see that the Constitution of the United States or for the United States and the Bill of Rights or the principles in which that um, is believed, and you can also see at an international level uh, what is now known as the, the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. You know, these particular things um, can actually be utilized by one who wants to declare their nationality because in the Declaration of Human Rights and in, which is the universal um, Declaration of Human Rights, as well as also in the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, both of them speak about the people having the right to a nationality. So one of the things in which that helps with bringing up jurisdiction in a court system is the change of your status. And many people don't want to believe that is the case. Um, however, if you had court cases in which that dealt with um, certain issues, especially when there is no injured party, as well as also there's no damaged property. A crime actually does not exist. This is Sherrod versus Cullen, United States Supreme Court case law, in which that state specifically that for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party, or i.e. damaged property. And if there is not, then guess what? There is no crime in which that has been committed. So they have us going to jail under the pretense of what is called it's called um, infractions, infractions. In other words, such as seatbelt violations nowadays. Uh, if you don't have a license, if you don't have registration, if you don't have insurance. Um, they're now trying to put you in jail for up to two years. And based on the United States Supreme Court case law, having no license, no registration, no force insurance, which is Wingfield versus Fielder, it states specifically in there that it is not an arrestable offense. It is not an arrestable offense. But yet, this is what these police policy enforcers are doing. But they're under the colorable aspects of law. All right? That's what it is. They're under the colorable aspects of law. Now, basically, we're prisoners in our own land. And so when you look at the word or the definition of prisoner, 
is one who is deprived of his or her liberty and who is against his or her will kept in confinement or custody. A person who is restrained of his or her liberty upon any action, civil or criminal, or upon commandment. All right, so when you look at that, you understand the real science behind the 14th from, from the 13th Amendment, in which that supposedly abolished slavery, but as you know, within there, for those who go to prison, essentially, all right? Um, those who go to prison um, become wards of the state, so hence you need a warden who is known as the straw boss. Hence, they, the workers or the prisoners there are known as essentially the straw men or homeos um, strapius, all right? Or what is called strapius homo, all right? Based on the Black Law Dictionary in which that is the Latin word for straw man, all right? Now, where does this originate from? You know, because this government strongly reflects all the levels, you know, the federal, the states, and the municipalities. You know, this so-called biased social design is falsely propagated as um, basically racism. However, racism, the festival of misdirection of purposes, is a public facade and a cover-up. Their true motive, all right, or actually their commonly practices basically what's called the church bulla, which is known as the inter um, cartera divina, all right, which deals with the culture, uh, allegiance, and influences. Now, this is actually a decree in which that comes from the Catholic Church, all right, during the Inquisition, all right, from the church bullas or bulls, it was issued during 1492, and 1493. Now, this was during the time when the Moors left the last stronghold of Granada, Spain. All right. And note that the commonly recognized um, untoys or antisocial actions and attitudes being marked as social is signatures of Europeans in America. And, uh, and they are not just mere acts of what is traditionally a falsely tagged as prejudice. Europeans occupy like North America, they claim to be. Christians or religious, which is dedicated basically or dictated by that um, church bulla. All right, that is actually their secret guide. It's called the Inter um, Cartera Divina, right, which is the source for this social engineering protocol, you know, used to amass wealth from the aboriginals by direct theft, trickery, adhesive contracts, and color of law. This bullet is the source of their lack of moral consciousness and roots, all right, and is actually rooted in their religious foundation, all right? These and um, related policies are applied against all Aboriginal natural persons held under the U.S. demo, known as basically a de facto government. And the word de facto means not factual. They're not the factual, actual government. So consequently, they practice color of law, color of authority, color of office, processes, and often contradicts due process of law, which is or which are constitutional principles. All right? And this is reflected in their prisons and jails, being veiled, which is actually concentration camps in North America. You know, so you know, very few speak openly about these bullets, there is evident, um, evidential truth as to why aboriginals are filled in their prison system and their jails. That, I mean, um, there's nothing else in which that we can come to. Matter of fact, one of the edicts or bullets stated specifically um, to destroy and give the genocidal practice of the children of Ham. And we was called the children of Ham. The word Ham comes from the word Cam, which are the Kemites or the ancient Egyptians. They knew that we, uh, that Egypt, um, that here in America was part of the um, Egypt of the East, or what is called the Dominion of Egypt. And this is what is told to us within the Moorish Holy Quran, Circle 7, in chapter um, 47. All right, so 
um, to support the economic demands of the church bullets, the de facto um, court system operatives constantly violate the Constitution and secure laws. All right, you can see that in um, based on Article Six. Article Six say that the supreme, the land is the Constitution itself, its laws, as well as the treaties. And so they commit numerous transgressions against natural people, their rights and their immunities, while knowingly violate international law. All right. Now, statistics shows that over 50% of the prisoners are not supposed to be in jail. Over 50%. That's because the majority of the crimes in which that or lynch or actually what is called victimless crimes, which that's an oxymoron. There is no such thing. Like we said, Sherrill versus Collins, United States Supreme Court case will say for a crime to exist, there must be injured party or damaged property. If there's not in any of these cases, then there is no crime. So statistics also shows that over 50% of those who have or may have been erroneously imprisoned and can be released based on DNA or not granted release, and in many cases, a review of proof of the innocence regarding DNA. The cases are not heard, and they are not released. This will prove the alarming rate of incarceration that are based on finances, often as a result of absorption and oppression of the Aboriginal people of their land. Imagine being in jail and having to pay for your confinement. That is actually what taxes are. So many of the jailhouses are now privatized and their protocol vary. But we intend to present a program or a process of assistance um, to our brothers and sisters in which that one of the things in which that we have to do is learn how to master habeas corpus which is spoken of within the Constitution, in which that is an affidavit, in which that helps with the release of an individual from jail and from prison. What you're going to do, you're going to see the call is on the line, and we're going to bring on our guests. Peace. We got Eric Cole 571. You're on the line. Five seven one. Is that the right number? Area code five seven one, you're on the line. Peace. Peace, peace. Islam, one moment. Let me put you on speaker. All right. Peace, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Loud and clear. Islam, brother Aline. Peace and high honor to you and Sister Kadira. All right. Appreciate that. And I honor We're glad to hear from you. Um, tell us what Islam. You're... Yes. For the, um, for the people, Free from you know, the Albion's cage, finally. Right, exactly. And, um... You know, let's let's get into that because that's what the discussion of the topic is tonight is um, the prison system and how it's being privatized and how it's actually the new nigga factory, you know, the new nigga industry. So um, let's get into what's going on with you and um, Brother Messiah and what we need to be doing. True. On October 23rd, which was a Wednesday, um, Brother Messiah and I were both kidnapped from our domicile in reference to a company that we were lawfully running. Um, They charged us both with tax fraud, supposedly. And, um, you know, after reading the case law uh, presented against us, they really have no case. There's no, um, of course, there's no injured party. And at the current time, I am out on a third-party bond, which gives me a custodian, pretty much a babysitter, to make sure that I appear at all court cases, and they have Brother Messiah on agency hold until a court case is built against us and they actually come up with a court date, which there is none at this time. 
Okay. So there's no court date, so they don't have a bond on him either, right? No, he has no bond. There's no court case. There's no court date. He's just sitting until there is an actual discovery made. All right. So they holding him unlawfully. That's essentially what's going on. True. Okay, what is it that we should be doing? Um, I know I've seen a petition. Um, is that something I wish that we need to be doing right now, definitely? True, indeed. Um, basically, the petition is petitioning the release of Brother Messiah Aziz Eel. Uh, we are going to add that to the writ of removal to the Supreme Court. We are also going to uh, submit a habeas corpus as well. Um, these are the documents that we are currently in process of creating. Um I was so blessed to be um, given paperwork by you and Sister Kadira as well in reference to um, a fax blast that we can send through. We're going to um, put that together and get that out to the brothers and sisters. I actually contacted the um, magistrate this afternoon trying to obtain the correct fax number, which they would not give me, but they did give me a um, mailing address that we can all use. So I will make sure I put that out to everyone. Um, there's plenty of information on our website um, in reference to the petition and, you know, the types of support that can be given to the brother and I as since this all transpired, it has created a myriad of bills. Um, we lost our home. We're currently uh, without domicile currently. We're staying with family. Well, I'm staying with family until the brother is released. Um just it just had a serious backlash, and there was a huge write up in a bunch of different uh newspapers in reference to what supposedly had happened, which is all propaganda and reference to show it just putting on a show to keep the inmates from applying for the actual monies that they deserve to receive after being state employees and imprisoned in the Albion prison right, and based on that fact. Um, we know that um, you're supposed to be able to at least declare uh, minimum wage, right? Islam, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, when we go back to the United um, Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, I remember Article 18 said that Indigenous people have the right to participate in decision-making matters in which would affect their rights through representations or representatives uh-huh. as well as to maintain and develop their own indigenous decision making institution. True. You know, so, well, we have to keep that in mind too. That's that's one of the things in which that we have to um um get to the level of. because um, I remember also in Article twenty eight it said indigenous people have the right to redress by means that can include restitution or when this is not possible, a just and fair and equitable um, compensation, you know. So, you know, um, it's dealing with the legal status and all the monetary compensation, um, compensation and other appropriate redress. So we know that based on the false allegations in which it's been brought up um, by the government, on have obviously um of the IRS um and they violate their own laws based on the fact that um of course you know the laws in which that um verify the fact that you was able to you know put this corporate together. Correct. <clears throat> That's absolutely correct, Brother I mean it even states in the Fair uh Fair Labor Standards Act of nineteen thirty eight the definition of an employee, which does not disinclude an inmate of a prison system. And the mm. first thing they do when you are put into a state prison system is put you on what's called state pay. Right. How can you get state pay if you're not an employee of the state? Exactly. Exactly. Matter of fact, I mean, um, it's called a ward of the state. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right, and that's right. That's the reason why the person over the um, prison complex, over the prison complex, is called a warden. Uh huh. Exactly. Right. In which that he's known as the straw boss, like we said earlier, and hence the men, um, you know, themselves are known as straw persons or straw men. So we understand 
this is based on commerce. There's no doubt about it. Indeed, indeed. Billions and billions of dollars are generated from the prison systems every year, and none of this money is being claimed by the inmates because they don't want them to have the information that allows them to claim that money. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. The information that was put into those newspapers was specifically made to frighten people from claiming what's theirs. Right. Right. So I, it's, it's it's just barely obvious that Brother Messiah and I are are nothing but examples, pretty much examples to um you know just put into place that that commerce belongs to them and not to the people to which it, whom whom it really does belong to. Well, that's exactly what the definition of straw man is. <laughs> yep. A friend or a third party who is put up in name only to take part in the transaction. Or one who acts as an agent for another for the purpose of taking title to real property and executing whatever document and or instrument for the principal may direct. It says, person who purchases property for another to conceal the identity of the real purchaser and to accomplish some purpose otherwise not allowed. Mm hmm so, yes, you're right. You don't want to have control of the executive state, and that's the same. So, like, you know, when, um, brothers bring up that they are the beneficiary or that they are the executor of the state now in court. Now, um, these court cases are being dropped real easy sure. because they have no control over the executor estate because the state has been collapsed. In other words, we have made the estate, which is the name spoken in all caps, the straw man, we have made it civilis mortus in the eyes of the law, which means dead in the eyes of the law. True. Sure. You know, so um, I'm just saying this for the um, audience because these are things in which that um, we need to be studying, you know, so that we can get a grasp of what is really taking place here. True. Sure. And, you know, to all the brothers out and sisters out there, just make sure you're ready because those Albions can come to you and take you it. So definitely be ready at all times to stand on your square. Study. Study as much as possible. No doubt. Matter of fact, um, based on Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness, um, you know, she writes that, you know, because she's a civil uh, rights lawyer. Um, her book deals with the you know, with the issue of the current mass levels of incarceration, you know, particularly in the United States, which is has 5% of the world population, but has 25% of the world prison, um, prisoners, you know, with so-called blacks making up 51 to 65% of the United States prison system, you know what I'm saying? And the crazy mm -hmm. thing is that in, in three decades, the United States prison population exploded 300,000 to more than 2 million, you know, with the majority of the convictions increased from drug violations. Indeed. You know? True. Mm -hmm. When I was, when I was um, imprisoned, the majority of the sisters that were around me were in for drug charges. Right. The section that I was in was full of um, just women that were in for drug charges, violation of probation, and... Um, Non-payment of child support. Mm-hmm. Right, right. No well, injured party in any case. No injured party, exactly. And as um Alexandra, Alexander states, she says that the majority of the young blacks in large American cities are warehoused in prison. Their labor is now used as part of the globalized economy. Mm-hmm. You know. So after having criminal records and labeled as felons, they are permanently trapped in second-class citizen status. At least they think they are. And that's the science of changing your status and declaring your nationality because this is what they want is trapped at, is at that permanent, um, permanent second-class citizenship or status, you know. And the crazy thing is that they have almost 8 million people under the prison correctional control. 
of our people, 8 million of our people. Now, you know we only make up, as they claim, about 14% of the um, population based on their statistics. But yet, 8 million, 8 million of us, which, you know, in other words, there's only about 40 million of us, but yet 8 million of us are under prison con, con, um, correctional control. That shit is crazy. Yes, it definitely is. And and the attack is against the brothers. The women in that prison are outnumbered by the men seven to one. Not mm. only do you pay to come into the prison, but they are charging you at every turn. If you need medical care, you have to pay for that. If you need food in addition to the garbage that they feed you, you have to pay for that at ex- exponential prices. A pack of noodles or noodles, which we all know cost 20 cents, is a dollar and 10 cents in prison. Mm. Just getting mm. in contact with your family, one phone call from Brother Messiah costs $25 for 15 minutes. Right, right. And um, and speaking of that, how, like, like for example, let's go over that. Let's, let's go through some of the prices of the products in there and how much the prisoner makes. And if... Even if it's possible, how long would they have to save up in order just to damn get the items from which that they need? Mm-hmm. Any commissary that is sent in by your family, they take their portion off first. They take $50 mm-hmm. for you coming in and being booked. Then they right. charge you for every medical visit that you make. Um, mm-hmm. And just it's just a constant money flow into the prison system. And the prison system is worked by all inmates. The only people that are inside the prisons that are receiving an actual W-2 form at the end of the year are the um, corrections officers. Everything else is done by all inmates. They do the cooking. They do the cleaning. Um, They do have a small maintenance crew that you may see once in a blue moon. If something breaks in there, they don't care about the brothers and sisters in there, all they take their time getting to it. The first three days I was in there, there was no hot water, so we could not shower. Clean clothes come about maybe once every two weeks. Clean sheets every once every two weeks. You are not given underwear. You are not given, um, you know, body care products with the exception of soap and aluminum-based products such as, you know, deodorants and shampoos which have SLS in them. Everything is designed for you to come back. They're poisoning you at every turn. The water tastes like metal. I did not drink water for 30 days. It it was really sad, and I I just I felt really sick in there. And then as I'm coming back to my family and I'm eating the way I was before I left, I find myself getting sick as I'm detoxing all of these poisons out of my system. My skin looks horrible. You know, I've lost I lost about a good 10 pounds in there in 30 days because I refused to eat the poison they were giving me. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah we already hear that that, that, had, that even had to happen, but that's what happens when um, you have psychopaths running, um, you know, the you know they can't follow their own laws. And this is um, a known fact. You know, you get Bobby E. Wright's book, you know, um, you know, psychopathic racial, you know, um, his book based on the psychopaths, he states that specifically is that psychopaths, um, not that they don't know right from wrong, it's just that they don't want to follow it. <laughs> and this is what we are seeing um, in the, at an alarming rate of these psychopathic individuals who end up becoming judges, lawyers, you know, um, and et cetera that they're not following their own oaths in which they have taken, which is based on the Constitution, you know, in which that specifically being, like you said, there's four constitutions, and one of the main ones, the Declaration of Independence, states that all men are created equal, um, based on the United States Constitution for the United States, or for America, uh, you know, of America, as we later become known as. Um, it states specifically, Article 6, that the supreme law are the treaties. They don't abide by the treaties. Matter of fact, um, all 371 treaties in which that they had with the indigenous people, they broke. They violated. Mm-hmm. You know? You know, seemingly the only thing in which that um, this European or Albion understands is when you hit them in their pockets. 
So we know that um, based on the Black's Law Dictionary Fourth Edition, it states that a, a statue is a bond or an obligation of record. This is what all the criminal um, statues are, bonds of obligation of record. So when you break a statue, as they claim, there's a bond attached. So when you go to the courtroom, charges are actually civil and not criminal. Everything involves the bond. So when you're arrested, there's two different sets of bonds. You have a bid bond you know, that is filed out, you know, filled out when you are arrested. And then you, um, especially in the United States District Court, they use form um, SF 273 or 273, 274, 275. You know, which is the bid bond, performance bond, and the payment bond. Um, there is another set of bonds, and both sets are put out by the GSA. Now, you have the um, at the lower level of court, which is the state level court, they have the SF Form 24, which is the bid bond, the performance bond, SF 25, and the payment bond, you know, which is SF 25A. These are all put out by the GSA under the comptroller of currency, under the um, general accounting office. So all these bonds have a sum, you know, um, attached to it, a total or amount attached to it. Like, for example, murder is $4 million. So you was able to pay $4 million, you won't go to jail. You know? Yeah, so this is what's going on. You know, this is a sad state that we're in, but this is why we have to master this information. It's just necessary. It's essential for us to do this. True. True indeed. And um, I recommend to everybody to go and get the movie Hidden Colors 2, um, where they actually break some of this information down and speak about it. Uh, one mm -hmm. of those who actually is Brother Kava, um, formerly known as Booker T. Coleman. You're going to have to definitely rise up and get knowledge of self and being able to do something active as far as um, helping transform what is going on here. Because right now we're being used as collateral. And um, the thing is, is that when you go and check the CCA, which is the Correction Corporation of America, you go to www.correctioncorp.com. That's www.c-o-r-r-e-c-t-i-o-n-s-c-o-r-p. Com. And um, there's eight people on the board of directors of the Correction Corporation of America. Number one is Joseph B. Russell. He's the top holder. Now, if you don't know who Russell, that's part of the Russell family, which is one of the top 13 Illuminati families, the Russell family. And then you also have John M. McFer um, Ferguson. Now, Russell owns 64,000 shares of CCA stock, which is worth about $70 million. And, um, uh, Ferguson owns about 34,000 shares, value at about 37 million. Now, over that is Payne Weber with 10,000 corporations in it um, and is a major stockholder of CCA, uh, which is the um, Corrections Corporation of America in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, Payne Weber Group is the United States of America. In other words, when you go to court, and they, um, in district court in particular, and it says United States versus you, so-and-so-and-so. And so and so. Well, the United States is actually paying Weber Group. And all the big international corporations are the stockholders and own all the stock of CCNA. Now, everyone is using our exemption on the private side. They file a 1096 tax return and show that it is a prepaid account, a prepaid interest, and they return it back to the prisoner. Now, they took the prisoner's deduction from the exemption, and they deduct the tax, and the IRS bill the prisoner for the tax, and bills the prison, prisoner for the tax. So the corporations are selling your exemption, which is your intellectual property. Now, where this exempt, um, exemption found at, look on the back of your Social Security card. The A through L, which is on the back of your Social Security card, some may have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, one of the 12 Federal Reserve Banks that is attached to, that's the number in red on the back of your Social Security card. I've seen it in black. I've seen it also in green. But majority of, um, of us have it in red, and that is attached to one of the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. 
like for example, E is Richmond, Virginia, F is Atlanta, Georgia, and so forth and so on. All right, so um, let's get back um, to Sister Crystal. Peace. Peace. Yeah, um, sister, um, sister, um, goddess, um, people want to know in the chat room, um, uh, what's the website? Our website is www.holymoorishemporium.org. All right, spell that for everybody. Sure, that's www.holymoorish. E M P O R I U M dot org. Okay. Um also they want to know um where's Brother Messiah located at. Um there's also more information about that put um that um petition. True. Um there's information on our website. Um on the front page you'll be able to click to sign the petition. You can also visit the page that says um donate. And that will list information on how to write to Brother Messiah. You can send him, you know, just thoughts of love. You can send him uh, material because he's in there teaching the brothers every day. Um, you know, just anything to keep the brother's spirits up. He loves to receive mail, so please feel free to write to him as much as possible. Um, any donations you can give, there's information on our website to do that as well. Um you know, also, you can also communicate with me and Sister Carrie via, via the uh, temple phone number, which is also listed on the um, temple webpage. Yeah, right. And for those who don't know, Brother Messiah is a grand sheik of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. Um, so, is there anything else which that you would like to say concerning the matter from Goddess? True. Um, the only way we are going to defeat the European takeover of our land is through unity. And that is my mate's first and foremost message to the people when he speaks, is that we need to unify and come together because that's the only way we're going to succeed in this war. And that's true indeed. No doubt about that. And I'm um, speaking of that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and well, you know, that's 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 the reason why we just talking about the CCA because um this is the reason why they have privatized the system. You know, um, you know, I have Jenny May and Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae and HUD and all, you know, and all are international and these uh, fidelity management and research is at the top stockholders of these prison systems and the top investment firms that is selling the bonds, you know, uh what they're doing is selling that as investment from securities. You know, they pulled them together and sell them as mortgage-backed securities. So we now understand the reason why the senator um, back in 2008 blamed the blacks for the downfall of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. You know, if we were learning how to discharge the debts, um, what they're saying is, is that the mortgage-backed securities, which was actually um, our way exemptions, um, would not have collapsed the market. You know, but we didn't know anything about that. You know, so they took these um, to the TBA, which is the um, basically the Bond Market Association, and the shares um, represented the stocks, which represents the accounts of the CCA. And all of this has been funneled through the C, um, um, CCA, um, or what is called the Correction Corporation of America. And what they're doing is selling the stock in the prison system by selling the prisoner accounts as securities through the security exchange. And we know this to be the truth because um, my wife and I was going to actually take the classes um, for prison bonds. Mm -hmm. You know, so, right, so this is what is going on. True, and, you know, do research on the UCC process as well because this is our only recourse against them when they slander our names in these newspapers and twist the stories to make us look like criminals. You have to be able to have recourse. So definitely do your research in the UCC process as well as um, make sure you have your straw man copyrighted. You're going to need it. 
Right, we definitely going to need it because all major corporations are feeding off the prison system, you know, including the REIT, which is the Real Estate um, Investment Trust, the PZN, which is the Prison Trust. All real estate companies are holding bonds, and these bonds are not redeemed, and they um, haven't closed um, the accounts. Like, for example, the Lehman Brothers just recently gave $6 billion. Um, you know, New York had a $3 billion deficit, and the Lehman Brothers – um, before they filed bankruptcy in 2009, um, gave New York City the money to build these credit facilities. Of course, we know what those are. Those are, That's the prison system. And we found out that the Lehman Brothers, you know, are the underwriters for the prison system. You know, they buy up the big bonds, the court judgments, you know, and um, and they that's how they um, hypothecate the bonds. You know, these banks make derivatives out of your promissory notes and sell them, mortgages, credit cards, et cetera. These prison bonds are being monetized. You know, they're, they make an investment security out of it, and they make a fortune off promise. You know, and these bonds go internationally into um, SID, which is S-I-N-D-S, and then into ANA, which is um, actually the Annual Numeral Numbering Association, which that's located in Brussels, Belgium, um, with unlimited capital. You know, this is where the euro, the yen, the sterling, everything is under the prison system. All countries are feeding off of it. And being that the United States has the largest prison system in the world, that's how, you know, that's just how they became a goddamn superpower. Mm-hmm. True. True. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, hold on. Let me bring on my co-host here. Brother L, you got anything that you want to comment on concerning the... Um, uh, 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 yes. Uh, what a lot of the uh, brothers and sisters in the prison system don't know that they're constantly dipping and dabbing out of their Social Security Trust Fund while right. they're in prison. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, when they get out, then they tell them, uh, "Well, you don't have, you don't ha- uh, have, uh, you have, when you get a certain age, uh, maybe twenty eighteen or somewhere, you don't, you won't have any more Social Security." You know, that's because they dip and dab in and out of your Social Security trust funds, and uh, that, although that's a lie, we all know, but that's what they tell them. And back to the thing when it dealing with the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, right. what a lot of these so-called white people don't know, they're slaves as well. Exactly. Because when General Robert E. Lee surrendered his forces to, uh, at least it says Grant, in Appomattox on April 9th of 1865, he surrendered everything, including their sovereignty. That's they right. were no longer sovereigns. All they was surrendered everything, including the slave property, over to the United States Corporation, which just ran out of England under the British Crown. Right, and via the Catholic Church, the Vatican, yes. um, the Roman. Um, yes. Via the United States um, Constitution, the Thirteenth Amendment, Section One, it says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist mm-hmm. within the. Or any place subject to their jurisdiction, and that's mm-hmm. the key jurisdiction. So that's the reason why we want to, to get out of the jurisdiction because we understand that it says a crime. But like we said, that's, um, um, when it says Sherrod versus Collins, it specifically states in the United States Supreme Court case law that for a crime to exist, there must be an interpart of damage property. If there isn't, then there is no exactly. crime. You know, exactly. So uh, we understand that every man is independent of all laws except those prescribed by nature. He is not right. bound by any institution formed by his fellow men without his consent. This is Cruden versus Neil, North Carolina. All right. Yeah. So uh, we have to understand that is that uh, we are above the law, you know, because laws was prescribed by the universe and as long as we are in tune with nature then the government should not interfere with the rights, with the unalienable rights of the people. 
Exactly. But they're doing that by transforming us into colorable people or colorable law and color of office and color of... And this is why they call us colored people. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, a, 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 a colorable law, colorable fiction, everything. Uh, dealing Also dealing with... Um, Back to the uh, 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 jurisdictions and all that. Uh, right. What we need to do is start hitting their pockets, and right. when we start hitting them pockets. You see a lot of things start turning around for us as Moors and Moors nationalists. You know, right. Uh, right. That's why we have to learn that to learn the laws. Because um, I know Louisville versus uh, Mutley, it states that if any tribunal or court finds absent of proof of jurisdiction over a person. And subject matter, the case must be dismissed. Yes, yes, and they must have an, uh, an indictment documents against you. They must have indictment papers. If they don't have any indictment papers, then they cannot proceed with that case. That's right. Exactly. That's exactly. And matter of fact, um, that's why it's called a true bill because you can actually utilize that. Um, along with other numbers in which that is attached to um, the straw man as a way of charging the debt, which that they um, can actually tell them to dip your exemption account. They've already been doing it, but now you give them authority in order to do it. So it's called conditional accepted um, um, for value. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. So... Yes, uh, but actually dealing with the UCCs and studying the UCCs and how to use them, to utilize them, and as well as the executive letters, uh, all those both are very essential to Moors. And once we get those, uh, really get those, uh, and both of those into power, uh, like again, like I say again, you see a lot of things start turning around in our favor. Against the Albion. Right, right. Well, see, that's why I keep talking about Sherrill versus Collins, because for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party, and there can be no sanction or penalty imposed on one because of the exercise of their constitutional rights, which is their mm -hmm. actual alienable rights. You know, so if this is the electi, you know, which is a body of crime, you know, um, which is determined in Western jurisprudence, refers to that it must be proven that a crime has occurred before a person can be convicted of committing a crime. Now, in this particular case, they have not done that with Brother Messiah. They did not do that with um, Sister Crystal, and therefore they are in violation of their own law. Yes, they are, so, and in, in, in the end, they're going to be, be hitting their pockets big time. Big right, time. right, right. Uh-huh. Right. They cannot have, you, you cannot have a trial without an injured party. That's just as simple as it is. You cannot, as a matter of due process of law, even be called or summoned into court without having an injured party. This is the way that law works. Exactly. Like I said, in the end, when they, get, when they hit them in their pockets real heavy, so heavy that uh, in every family household, uh, all those judges, which are, called, which are magistrates, exactly, they're not judges, uh, they're going to cringe every time they hear the name Messiah Bay. Right, because then the summons got to come, and it must be signed by an Article Three judge. And if you Article One or Article Two judge, then that means it just doesn't equal up. Is um, um, Like you said, they're nothing more than administrators or bankruptcy um, administrators, because they actually mm -hmm. open a bankruptcy law, actually. You want to know the truth of it. Exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, once uh, 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 once everybody, a uh, wish uh, 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 more of us, uh, more or well, more, I, I say more, because a, a lot of them are not nationalized. But I wish more. One more told me that, well, uh, the, the thing he have a problem with more they too involved with nationality. But my problem, well, I tell him him is that, hey, uh, my problem is there's not enough of us becoming nationalized. I agree, brother, because um, what jurisdictional issues do you stand upon when you go to court? Like I said before, 
if you go to court and you have not been nationalized and you have not um, put forth affidavits on the public record, they will call for a psychic evaluation. In other words, they will put your ass in the crazy house. Mm. So you have a paper trail in order to um, correlate what you're saying. See, that's why it's called spelling, because you must place the spell. And you do that by way of not just your words, but also those words on paper. Yeah. And being that you haven't set forth and cast your spell, then guess what? They're going to cast one for you. (laughs) Most definitely. Okay? And if they cast one for you, it ain't going to be good. Mhm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, as I said, right. we make the law. Uh, we are the law. You know, we are the law, and uh, as, 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 as time that they must be made to understand that, and um, as, as time that we are made to understand it ourselves. Talking about right. the majority of our, our, our people, our more people. That's right. And see, the thing is is that people don't understand that the original bond that we're referring to that is sold on the stock market um, and sold to various corporations around the world is your birth certificate, the long Mm -hmm. form. And the value is unlimited. How be it is to put a value such as $100 trillion in silver dollars. Now, you can make it more if you want. Now, how much you are worth? That's your decision. Now, when the mother, which is known as the informant on the birth certificate, now the word informant translates nowadays to the streets as being a snitch. Now, mm-hmm. it gives the title birth certificate to the state. The baby then becomes the property and the slave of the state. That's why they call this the wars of the state. So, hence, state property. Yes. So, if we go to jail, we have the warden who's over the wards of the state which is state property, just like when you sign, um, um, like 18, when you get ready to have the, um, when they want you to sign um, your registration selective, what is called selective service card to go Mm -hmm. into the military, you now become property of this state. Exactly. You know, so these titles, the certificate is then turned into the corporations at the, actually in Puerto Rico, Department of State Corporations. Mm-hmm. You know, which is in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico right. is the territory right. of the District of Columbia. Yes. Yeah. It goes also yeah. Um, yeah. to the DTC, which is Depository Trust Company and the subsidiary companies. Mm. And then it goes the on the stock market, where you are issue out. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's why I want a lot of them. Uh, go downtown and get uh, marriage uh, certificates and stuff like that. That seals, uh, uh, if they ever have any children, offsprings or whatever, it seals their fate. That's why uh, they can always come in and kick down your doors and take your children away from uh, your children away from you, which is their property, actually, you know, because you signed them away. Starting with that birth certificate and marriage certificates. Our certificates, those are negotiable instruments. A registered security, a stock certificate evident and representing the preferred, the preferred stock of the corporation and against which that you are the surety. It's a pedigree shadow document or shadow paper. Right? What's called what else you see? Establishing the existence of our what? Straw man. Mm-hmm. A distinct artificial person or artificial entity with a fictitious name. That is a document of title to a straw man. And what mm-hmm. is the straw man in the Wizard of Oz? The straw man was the first person that Dorothy met on the yellow brick road. Yeah. It is a house receipt for your physical body. A delivery receipt. The industrial bond between you, the flesh and blood, man or woman, and the industrious society and corporate Called the United States or uh, artificial. Yes. So this exactly. they had to turn into an artificial person because they can't do business 
with a nasty person or indigenous person or a Native American. Mm-hmm. All right? True. Yeah. That's why we always say he wish he had a brain. <laughs> exactly. I wish I had a brain. Right. The man of straw. Right. And uh, at the lower right hand corner, you see American Banknote Company or Midwest Banknote Company. It's a note. That's why we say it's a negotiable instrument because it's telling you that number one is on certificate paper, um, like a like a check. And then it mm-hmm. says a can bank company. So the United States citizen is pledged as collateral for the national debt. Yeah. <laughs> and like Sister sense. Crystal said, like Sister Crystal said, that if you don't do the master the science of the UCC, which is the Uniform Commercial Code, then this in commerce stands because you don't have a negative abortment or denial of corporate status on record in order to state otherwise. Right. Right. Uh, uh, here's some boys talk against the UCC because they say it's uh, an admiralty maritime creation. But what they don't understand is it's no, it, it. We're the masters of the seven so we was masters of the maritime law. Exactly. Exactly. It's a boy's creation. Exactly. By the Moors. Exactly. So you know that when they say dumb stuff like that, they don't know what the hell they're talking about and just walk away. Because we were well, more also means navigator, nav- navigator of the high seas. Bingo. Exactly. High seas, Admiralty Maritime Law. If I ain't mistaken. What's, what's, what's their argument? The no. Mooring, which means to anchor your boat to the shore, but the anchor is in water. Oh, man, yes. Yes. So hence the term mooring. That's but why just, on the sides of the river it's called what? The bank. Bank. The banks control the flow of what? The currency. Look, mm. come on now. Look, look, this shit is over. <laughs> it is. This is huh. it, it, they're done. Yeah, we so, we up on only thing, only thing we doing right now is is trying to get a little bit more pieces to this loophole, and then we're going to demolish it. That's it. The game is up. It's over. Indeed. You know, and of course, my little Bay, he will be out very very real soon. Right. We already got the Habeas Corpus in action. Um, put that in. We can also start um doing um whenever they begin to start doing a process in which that they have to give him a bond sooner or later here because they're going to have to be a true bill of indictment if they find mm-hmm. anything wrong, which more than likely they won't because of the laws in which that already are prescribed to the fact that you can do what you have been doing. Right. Mm-hmm. And the things they've done, it shows they don't know law. They don't know law. Right. But they will. Right. We will teach them. Right. Mm-hmm. They're gonna they're gonna learn it. They're gonna learn the hard way. Mm-hmm. Well, see that's, that's the difference between a left hemisphere thinker, which is just a mere linear thinker, and a right hemisphere thinker, which is holistic. You can see all the connecting pieces through in all these various science, but a linear person can look at this information and not see the connection pieces. So therefore, they're just in the focus on just one aspect of it. Well, mm-hmm. it's a whole point of view that should be at. It's totally dumb. It should be looking at. They're not just a fragmented aspect. And this is what I have law is that they have us focused on the various aspects of law, such as contract law. Mm-hmm. You have to do those who are specialized in just contract law. Or those who are specialized in contract law. Those who are specialized in um, common law. I'm going to specialize in um, colorable law, which is statutes, codes, rules, regulations, and ordinances. Um, so we see 
the various aspects that are, you know, or even maritime law, which is called amorality law, they have on the section four, as well as also equitable law. You know, mm-hmm. so all these aspects are broken up when you go to law school in order for specializing, but it's actually a connecting piece within all of them in which that uh, we have to study as more, particularly in order to um, keep ourselves out of these potential predicaments um, so that um, they won't have any loophole in order to go through at all. So this is the thing is they learn all their loopholes and then shut them down from being able to um, come back um, at us, you know what I'm saying, through any loophole because we have found the connecting pieces between everything in which that they have to offer, you know, because the keys are there, you know. Because, yeah. uh, you know, we know that a lot of times they're speaking different ways. Like when you look in the law book, sometimes they speak in uh, what appears to be metaphors and allegories, mm-hmm. you know. So we just have to be aware of the language in which that um, they are using so that we can, you know, get their head up, you know, or the hands right. up as well. You know, mm-hmm. I was gonna say it takes a lot of uh, of uh, uh, as nationalists, Moors, and uh, more that want to become nationalists to really, really get deep into the Black Law dictionaries and if you can the Bouvier dictionaries, uh, law dictionaries, and dealing with the uh, uh, UCC studies and the studies of the executive letters and the study of law, other law, period, and. Uh, uh, man, you know, uh, we will take our land back, piece by piece. Right, and um, and let me explain this one more time, maybe in more in depth, where y'all can get the full understanding of the ramifications about what is taking place, not just with Brother Messiah, but or with Sister Crystal, but also with um our um other brothers and sisters in which that is filling those prisons and those um jails, which is up to sixty five percent. That when a child is born, the hospital generally sends the original, not a copy, of the birth certificate, which is called the live birth, to the State Bureau of Vital Statistics, uh-huh. which is sometimes called the Department of Health or Rehabilitation or Rehabilitative um, Services. And each state is required to supply the corporate United States with birth, death, and health statistics. Now, the state agencies then uh, receive the original record of the live birth. They keep it and then issue another birth certificate in a different form. In other words, this is when they transform the long form to the short form, which that you can go get a copy of the short form any time for what we call the register of deeds. Now, when the name of a baby is spelled in all letters, this creates an artificial person or corporation or legal person as opposed to a massive indigenous person. Now, the birth certificate now becomes an investment security issued by the state. It is then registered at the United States Department of Commerce, the executive office, especially through our own um, sub-agency, which is the United States Census um, Bureau, which is responsible to register vital statistics for all the states. The Treasury will issue a bond on the value of the birth certificate. That bond is then made available for purchase on a security exchange and is bought by the Federal Reserve Bank. This purchase then becomes the authority of the collateral to issue Federal Reserve notes. This is why the same number that's on the back of your Social Security card happens to be on the front of the money in which that you utilize on a daily basis, which we use as a medium of exchange. Simply put, the Treasury used the loans to purchase a bond. The Fed, the Federal Reserve, holds a purchase money security interest in the bond for the Department of Commerce, which invests the sale proceeds in the stock or bond market. Now, while the original one is located at the Depart- um, Department of uh, what's called Depository Trust Company on War on Water um, Street in New York City. Mm-hmm. So this goes, you know, to be, you know, going to detail about what is actually taking place. Um, let's go to the phone line right quick. We got area code eight zero three. Area code eight zero three. Peace. Peace. Greetings. Peace. Peace. Eight zero three. You had a question, a comment. Okay, they didn't have a question. All right. Um, 
For those that want to call in, call in at 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. Um, press 1 and you will come in and we'll put you on, ask your question, or give forth a comment. All right? Once again, that's 626-414-3535. Give us a call. All right, so let's get back to the topic here. And um, so this is um, basically how it breaks down. So the value of the bond um, in today's world is about, you know, the birth certificate comes up based on the IRC, which is the revenue code, comes up to about $650,000. So the bond is then held in trust for the Federal Reserve at the Depository Trust Company, like we said, is which is located in New York at 55 Water Street, about two blocks down the street from the Federal Reserve. Um, the New York branch of the Federal Reserve, there's 12 of them. Um, and then um, you have the bank certificate issued by the state is then registered at the United States Department of Commerce. Um, like we said, the executive branch. All right, so um, this is how they do it. You know, so it's possible that when these numbers, and see, this this is the key, too, that when you look at the first number or the first letter in front of those eight numbers on the back of your Social Security card um, called your International Monetary Fund fund number or IMF number, it is also called the prepaid levy bond number. The prepaid levy bond number, that bond is then made available for purchase on like you said, the security exchange and is bought by the Federal Reserve Bank. This purchase then becomes the authority or the collateral to issue Federal Reserve notes. This is why um, we use them as exchange, because they're exchanging you as collateral for the money. The number on the back of the Social Security card um, indicates the bank that bought you when you was born, based on the projection of your life earnings. So they suspect that you make about at least $650,000 to $1.6 million in your lifetime if you live to be 65 years old. So the first character is always a letter, and this letter corresponds to a Pacific Bank of the Federal Reserve Bank. The rest of the numbers are prepaid account numbers, all right? It's possible to use these numbers to read all your debts. Why? Because it's your money in the first place. There was a bond that was attached to your birth certificate all right, at birth, and this is what we're talking about. Now, the original Social Security card was designed by uh, Fred um, Happel of um, Albany, New York, in 1936. The creation of the Social Security card is known as the Secu Trust, which refers to a beneficiary having an equitable interest in a trust, the legal title being vested to the trustee. This is Green versus Underhill, United States Supreme Court case law. It says the IRS is the accounting and collection division of the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, which is the bankers, who the company owes money to. They are the ones who enforce and oversee the bankruptcy of the company. All right? They are really not your enemy in this sense. They are only doing what they were hired to do, and that is to what? Keep track of the bankruptcy of the company. It is imperative we learn how to use them to for our advantage, as it could be a tremendous resource for us. Your exemption is a bridge between the private side and the public side. You must understand that and learn how to master both. Now, this is the thing. The Federal Reserve Bank in the state of in the states of the United in the United States are shown that one, um, the first district, which is A, is the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. District two is B which is the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. District 3 is C, which is the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. District 4, which is D, is the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. District 5, which is E, is the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond, Virginia. District 6, which is the Federal Reserve Bank, which is F, is the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. District 7, G, which is the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. District H is 8. Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, Missouri. District 9 is I, which is the Federal Reserve Bank of Minnesota, um, Minneapolis. District J, which is the 10th district, is the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. All right? And District 11 
is K, which is the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, and District 12 is L, which is the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. So these are the 12 banks that we're talking about that makes up the Federal Reserve Banking System, in which that is overran um, by the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and the Warburgs and the Lehman Brothers and so forth and so on, all right? Now, the Treasury is also a bank, all right? Now, if you go to um, United States Title Code 31, Section 321, it spells out that the security of the Treasury is the CFO of the Treasury Bank. Who is the current – now, who is the current um, security or secretary of the Treasury? His name is Jacob Lou or Jack Lou. Now, my birth certificate is already um, a traded security they are holding, all right? So you're telling me that the Treasury, that is, I am going to use a part of the funds that you have stolen my whole life. And this $100 trillion bond is the amount that I will deposit in my account. Basically, what we're saying is that when you do a chargeback or a promissory, which is actually what is known as negotiable instrument, you do a chargeback, a, um, a negotiable chargeback, a negotiable bill of exchange, as well as a private bond settle, as well as your affidavits um, sent to the United, which is sent to the United States um, Secretary of Treasury, Jacob Liu. You put together your UCC one financing statement your UCC-1 attachment affidavit, your UCC um, negative avertment, security agreement, private agreement, whole harmless indemnity clause, collateral listing, bond for discharge, um, denial of corporate status, grant and power of attorney. You actually send most of these documents along with the copyright, trademark, trade name, as, as it been mentioned, um, you know, by um, Sister... Um, Crystal, and also by um, Brother L, you send these various documents. You don't have to send your security agreement but or your private agreement, but the rest of the documents need to go to Timothy, um, to um, Jacob Liu, who is the United States Secretary of Treasury, in order to be able to put something, um, put these particular um, bonds that you have um, made from your exemption account, which is based on one of these 12 banks. So whatever letter is in front of those eight numbers on the back of the Social Security card is related to one of the banks in which that, like we said, if it's A, then it's Boston. If it's B, New York. If it's C, Philadelphia. If it's D, Cleveland. If it's E, Richmond. If it's F, Atlanta. If it's G, Chicago. If it's H, San Francisco. If it's I, um, Minneapolis. If it's J, Kansas City. If it's K, Dallas. If it's L, San Francisco. All right? So um, you need to know this information so that when you do um, your negotiable or non-negotiable accepted for value, approved for payment, um, when you accept for value, um, there are various presentments and all related endorsements front and back in accordance with the Uniform Commercial Code 3-419 and the House Joint Resolution 192 of June 5, 1933. You're asking for the release of all proceeds, products, accounts, and fixtures in the orders of the court to be issued immediately to yourself. And so you have what is called exempt from levy, which is deposit to United States Treasury and then charge the same to your full name and then, of course, to your Social Security number on the front, and is, um, which is the employer's number, um, but is also known as your exemption number, especially about the DAS, but is linked to the password on the back, which is your prepaid levy bond number, Okay. Because there is no money to pay anything. The contracts are already in place. We are simply accepting the credit that has been established and authorizing them to set off the debt, which to say credit. All right. So written in the um, proper bank speak, um, it is possible to set off unsecured debt items to the IRS and authorize the Secretary of the Treasury to issue money orders to pay off those debts using your public side straw man which is your Social Security number. And on the back side of the Social Security, there is a um, that um, prepaid levy bond number, which is attached. That is your private account that you can be that can be drawn from, um, from. So by doing so, you actually help reduce the national debt. And so this is why we was blamed 
for the crash of um, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae um, back in 2008 is because we have not learned how to do that. All right. So um, any closing remarks, Sean, before we go? Um, we definitely need to get you um, again here, Goddess. Um, please um, give all the information again for everybody can know where to go to. Sure, indeed. Please um, visit our website at www.holymorishemporium.org. That is www.holymorishemporium.org. You can uh, look at the donation page as well as the contact us page and get in contact with me or Sister Carrie in reference to Brother Messiah. There's information on how to write to Brother Messiah. Uh, you can write him letters, send him um, information. Uh, he's studying in there. He's teaching the brothers. Anything that, you know, anyone can do, even positive thoughts. We um, we plan on doing a ritual for the brothers the first three nights of the full moon. So if everybody can be in meditation with us that evening, we would appreciate it. Just, you know, any positive thoughts and information that you can send through, we would appreciate it. Um, the temple website phone, I'm sorry, the temple email is Moorish Holy, Moorish Holy Temple of Science 2X at gmail.com. Feel free to email us and ask any questions that you need to. Me and Sister Carrie are on it and taking care of everything we need to take care of. And, again, unify, brothers and sisters. That's the only way we're going to win this is through unity. And I'm um, saying it one more time as far as um, the um, email address. True. It's Moorish Holy Temple of Science 2, F as in Frank, at gmail.com. All right. We appreciate you coming on, Goddess, and I'm giving forth that information. We're definitely going to um, utilize it. Make sure you all go out and utilize it, especially those who um, get this information in the archive. Make sure you all hit up on the Moorish Holy Emporium um, website, as well as also um, hit um, the goddesses up at their email address. So um, we have to do something in order to start making um, changes in this world here. And um, it's going to have to start, to, as Michael Jackson said, the start is going to have to um, start with us, the man in the mirror type of thing there. All right? Since we understand what we're looking at, then um, we got to change it. All right? Um, let me get the closing remarks from Brother L before we go. Brother L, what's your closing remarks, brother? Yes, the, the, the question, actually, it's a www.holymoresemporium.org. Is that correct? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay, excuse me. I got it down. Uh, okay. I think we did some good tonight. I believe we did some good tonight, uh, especially for the Moors around the world, as well as in, 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 not here in North America, and especially for Brother Messiah Bay. Yes, sir. Keep on uh, doing good and uh, keep on uh, being strong and unifying ourselves. So we exactly. get ourselves out of this mess that we're in. Exactly. exactly. No doubt about it. We have to. All right. So we get ready to find all Close for all the radio. Finally. Finally. We are on the air. No doubt. All right. All right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the same natural
thoughts transmits it. Burr. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burr. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burr. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Burr. 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 of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages for us to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories, shit that works.